up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel I am gold pony I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the new 2021 Honda HRV, courtesy of Apple Honda in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so I wanted to check this one out today because there is 0% financing being offered at the time of this video at least, which is amazing. It doesn't get better than that. Not only that, well above average reliability rating by consumer reports and once again it does not get better than that that is actually the highest reliability rating given by consumer reports and there's actually some small changes for the 2021 honda hr believe it or not so in this video i will be going over everything about this one testing out acceleration braking steering feel sound system exhaust clip all of that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so of course there will be be several different trim levels for the 2021 Honda HR. First one being the LX starting at $21,220. Sport for $23,170, which actually is the one we have today. EX for $24,420. And lastly, the EXL going for $26,020. And by the way, that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration. If you wanted to add all wheel drive, simply add $1,500 to any of those prices. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the HRV is going to be the same. Powering this little beast is going to be a 1.8 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder engine, putting out 141 horsepower at 6,500 RPM, 127 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,300 RPM. Power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a CVT, zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 8.6 seconds for the front wheel, 9.5 seconds actually for the all wheel drive. We will do an acceleration test in a little bit here, so I'll get to test that out a little bit, but MPG numbers coming in at 28 in the city, 34 in the highway for the front wheel drive, and 27 in the city, 31 on the highway then for the all wheel drive configuration. But either way, taking regular unleaded fuel, so you get to save yourself a little bit of money there. But so that before we do any kind of paddle shifter test or acceleration test in the HRV, as I would imagine, there are of course some drive modes that come standard on this one. Of course, you have normal, which is what it naturally defaults to. There is sport, which is where you just slide the shifter all the way to the back. That is how you're going to put it in sport and there is also a green econ button located by the driver's left knee that is the third driving mode and so ultimately these drive modes will adjust things like the shift points the throttle response and the climate control system as well and you might be curious about that last one there so if you put it in econ driving mode let's say when you're driving on the highway because you wanted to get some better mpgs it is going to of course soften up that throttle sensitivity but it is also going to dial back let's say the air conditioner on a super hot day so you kind of got to pick your battles there so if you wanted a little extra mpgs i will say that econ button works beautifully i had it on a couple of my civics back in the day and it definitely helped me get a ton more miles per gallon than i would have otherwise without the econ button i put that to the test that comparison plenty of times and it does work so did want to mention that but nonetheless having now got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and put it in sport mode and let's first test out the paddle shifters here i'm kind of curious to see how quickly they react keep in mind this is a cvt so it's not really real shifting it's simulated shifting but we still got to play around with them of course so let's get to it let's test out these paddle shifters and see how quickly they react for us here all right we are in first gear yeah. okay i mean it works it does pretty good at simulating the shifting i will say that but I know you can still tell it's a CVT so it does take a little bit of the enjoyment out of it but having said that it did work it does shift pretty darn quickly even though it is a CVT so I don't mind the paddle shift just like think it's pretty cool but anyways let's do an acceleration test here it's loud <laughs> It's it's a little bit on the slow side, if I'm being honest, but it's pretty much as expected. I mean, the zero to 60 number in 9.6 seconds for our all wheel drive HRV that we have today, that is to be expected. It's not gonna be the quickest thing in the world. Shouldn't have any issues emerging onto the highway and uh, it does get quite noisy, which I kinda like. I like hearing the engine, but anyways, 
not the quickest thing in the world, but to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.5 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.1 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it actually comes in at a pretty remarkable 114 feet, which is kind of really good for the size of an SUV. Typically when you test SUVs, you'll get upper 120s and 130s, but 114 feet, that's kind of on the same territory as maybe a sports sedan. So that is pretty dang good. And I remember this having driven the HRV in the past. The braking is really one of the strong suits when it comes to the HRV. And that's a good thing because if you have to make a quick stop, 60 to zero and 114 feet is absolutely brilliant. So you're a lot less likely to hit the guy in front of you if you have to do that with the HRV because the braking and the braking feel really is quite good in this thing. So I wanted to mention that. Then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension, in the back torsion beam rear suspension for the front wheel drive, but then a DD on rear suspension for the all wheel drive. So it's kind of interesting that suspension setup in the back at least, it's going to differ slightly depending on if you go with the front wheel drive or all wheel drive. So the all wheel drive is gonna give you a slightly better suspension setup than the front wheel drive, little better ride quality there so having said that ride quality is really perfectly fine i haven't had any issues in the hrv today it's definitely soaking up a lot of pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely here so i don't mind it touching on steering feel that is the first thing i noticed when i got in this one today the steering feel is brilliant it's on the same level for sure as the mazda and i typically don't say that because mazda usually kills it with steering feel but i would say the honda hrv is just as good as let's say the cx30 like the steering feel that is the first thing i noticed to elaborate a little bit i guess it's definitely on the heavier side gives you a much better feeling of being in control it instantly point you in the direction that you want to go a lot of times with suvs you have super loosey-goosey steering feels and they are so unenjoyable to drive but that is 100 percent the complete opposite in the hrv it's wonderful to drive in this thing i love the steering feel that is one of the best things along with the braking at least when it comes to driving dynamics for me at least but then touching on cabin noise really all you get is the engine noise when you really hit the gas but as far as wind noise goes it's pretty pretty much at bay. You don't get a whole lot of exterior wind noise coming into the cabin, even at higher speeds. But again, it's just the engine noise. It is quite a loud engine. And I personally don't mind that, but I did want to mention it for anybody who might. But anyways, that touching of visibility, it is great. I can see perfectly fine out the back. So 100% no issues whatsoever when it comes to visibility. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2021 Honda HRV. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Honda HRV, finished in crystal black pearl. All blacked out, actually. It looks pretty darn good, actually, in all black. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one, starting to the sides. When it comes to the headlights, they are projector beam halogen headlights for all trim levels across the board. That does come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard. And then if you were to go with the sport trim level like we have here or up, you will get fog lights down below. You guys can see those. Gloss black front lip then towards the bottom only for the sport trim level and actually it just kind of ties in with their black exterior so no real difference there in our case but definitely a very good looking front end I got to be honest I don't mind it anyways that about rounds out the front let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the HRV here all right so now since we are around to the side of this one roof rails coming with the sport trim level and up you guys can see there's aluminum roof rails up top there rear privacy glass once again for that sport trim level and up and actually this is new for the sport trim level previously the sport didn't get the rear privacy glass so i do like it especially with our black exterior here when it comes to those side mirrors they are power adjustable gloss black side mirrors for the lx trim level and the sport then if you were to go with the ex and exl you will get heated side mirrors with integrated turd signals and then they're going to be body colored by the way as well and take a look down to the wheel setup 17 inch silver painted alloys for the lx ex and exl and then 18 inch machine finished alloys for the sport definitely look very good with the black exterior and the black wheels so that's just my personal opinion one of the coolest things about the hrv is that rear door handle for the back doors there kind of is integrated up top into the design around the window so i think that's pretty cool it's kind of like hidden almost like this is a suv coupe kind of thing with two doors but it actually does have four doors it's just hidden so 
I do like that design. But anyways, now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the HRV. And so starting up top, you will find that gloss black shark fin antenna. Just below that, rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that, rear window wiper, LED taillights coming standard for every single trim level across the board. That is pretty darn cool. We do have the trim level badging on the rear lift gate there as well. And just below it all, you guys, a single exhaust outlet, but with a chrome tip. Love that. So many companies these days are not taking that extra step and they're just tucking the exhaust away and it's not as good looking. But anyways, as always, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Here is that exhaust clip. But now since we are around back of the HRV, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a manual lift gate. So you can just simply lift up on that rear lift gate itself and it will open up for you, of course. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 23.2 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 57.6 cubic feet. There are some cargo tie-down acres back there. That was nice to see. Cargo lighting as well. No grocery bag hooks, but if you look under the cargo floor, you will find a spare tire. In case anybody was curious if the HRV had a spare tire versus the fix-a-flat situation, it is a spare tire, which I personally prefer, so I did like that. That was pretty cool. But anyways, now let's go ahead and make our way to the rear legroom and the rear seats in general, because this is the, one of the best parts about the HRV. So 39.3 inches is how much rear legroom you have. For reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Also, there is a 12 volt power outlet, so you could charge up tablets or phones or whatever if you wanted to back there. There is no rear center armrest with cup holders, but the very best part about those rear seats, they are magic seats, or at least that's what Honda calls them, but they are pretty darn magical. The way that works is you can actually lift up underneath of those seats, kind of like the second row of a truck, I guess you could say, and then just simply push them up and then you fold down the bar and that is how they're going to actually lock into place. And that gives you a ton of extra room for different sized objects or things or dogs even. If you have maybe a Great Dane, it might be more useful to actually fold up those rear seats, giving that dog a little bit more room or whatever the case, whatever you want to use it for. It is pretty darn cool that the rear seats can do this. I am always a huge fan, whether it be in the Honda Fit, which is no longer produced here in the US, or the HRV, which is pretty darn cool. But anyway, so let's now go ahead and make our way up to the front seats. Manually adjustable cloth seating does come standard. You will actually get heated front seats if you were to go with the EX or EXL trims. And then leather seating is going to come on the EXL, L meaning leather, of course. So that is pretty darn cool. Overall, seats are actually not that bad. They are pretty comfortable. No complaints from me. Not the very most comfortable seats in the world. That goes to Lexus F Sport seats as as always but pretty darn comfortable seats no issues with going on a long road trip in the hrv for sure but then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for the sport trim level and up and that of course is what you guys are looking at right now so i like the leather wrapped steering wheel but then making our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here it is a pretty basic key you got your honda logo on the one side then when you flip it over lock unlock and that button to pop the rear hatch but it is actually a push button start if you go with the ex trim level and up so therefore the lx and the sport like we have here it's not going to be a push button start so i am just simply going to put my phone on the brake and turn the key it's <laughs> so once started up tachometer is all the way to your left speedometer is large and in charge and front and center and then there is a digital display all the way to your right giving you the basics like outside temperature trip a trip b time of day things like that so that's pretty much all you need and it will also actually there is a ring around the speedometer i don't think i mentioned it while i was actually driving but that will illuminate in different shades depending upon how you're driving at any given time if you're driving more eco-friendly let's say it's going to illuminate in green and if you're kind of flooring it, it's going to illuminate in blue. So it's kind of cool how it tells you how you're driving. Kind of incentivizes you to drive a little more eco-friendly, get a little better MPGs, I guess, if you will. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at overall interior quality of our HRV here. And so if you were looking for a power moonroof, you will not get it on the LX or Sport that we have today, but you will get it on the EX and EXL. That's how you're going to go ahead and do that. Sport pedals, actually. One of the first things I noticed as well when we got into our Sport trim level that is specific 
to the sport trim level are these alloy foot pedals that I think are pretty darn cool. Automatic climate control coming with the EX trim level and up. Otherwise, you get this kind of old school, very easy to use though setup that we have here in our sport. Auto dimming groove rear mirror coming with the EXL trim level and up. Just behind the shifter, you do have an electromechanical parking brake, which is pretty cool. And one of the coolest things, I think I just get a kick out of the simple things these days, but there are actually a couple buttons within this kind of cup holder section here to turn this into cup holders. If you have a relatively large drink, you don't have to press the button, and then it's a pretty deep area to store your bottles or cups or whatever. But then there is an actual cup button where if you press that, it kind of gives you a higher level level to put your cups in. if you have a smaller cup or juice box or whatever you're drinking you can press that little button there and that's going to give you a little different situation for whatever size drink that you currently have so i think that's pretty cool i don't think i've ever seen that on any other vehicle so honda's thinking on that one it's pretty cool just behind there you have your center armrest with probably the least amount of storage i've ever seen within a center armrest but anyway it is a pretty functional cabin it's really just what you would need for this one but another really cool part about the hrv there's some hidden storage underneath of the shifter here with a couple USB charging ports as well so if you were leaving the vehicle and you have something maybe somewhat valuable go ahead and put it under there and people are less likely to see it so I think that's pretty cool too but anyways let's now go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen now on the HRV 5 inch LCD screen coming with the LX not a big fan of that of course 7 inch color touchscreen display though coming with the sport trim level and up this is what we currently have here today. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard Android Auto Apple CarPlay for this seven inch screen only, of course. We do also have some cool looking screensaver clocks, which I always like to point out in Honda. I personally like them. And of course you can check out your radio information up there as well. And so when it comes to the sound systems, Honda traditionally gives you a different sound system for each trim level that you could possibly go with, which is always quite interesting to me. But LX trim level gives you four speakers and 160 watts. If you jump up to the sport, you still get four speakers, but it bumps up to 180 watts. And then the EX and EXL trims are going to give you six speakers and still 180 watts so it's a little bit different dependent upon the trim level but we do have the four speaker 180 watt sound system here today so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one It's four speakers, what do you want? I don't know, it's definitely not the best sound system I've ever heard, but it'll get the job done for the HRV, I suppose. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put this one in reverse, of course you will find a rear view camera with multi angles, by the way. And it's a pretty high def camera too. So there's three different buttons at the bottom of that screen, giving you three different angles you can see behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. It's all pretty boring at this point. And, but if you wanted Honda Sensing, you guys may or may not already know, Honda Sensing is Honda's safety suite. That is pretty darn good. You do have to go with the EX or EXL trim levels, but if you were to do that, that is going to give you a collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, Honda lane watch, and automatic high beams as well. That is a dang good bit with Honda Sensing. So again, EX or EXL trim level is how you're going to go ahead and get that. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, these magic seats, that is probably one of the best parts about the HRV. That is great. It's so practical. Good fuel economy actually for this thing as well. So a big fan of that. Incredibly reliable. Again, Consumer Reports gives it the very best reliability rating possible. So that is definitely a huge deal as well. 0% financing. You cannot get any better than that for any vehicle out there. So that's wonderful as well. The only thing is I'm wondering how the redesign is going to look because the redesign is right around the corner. There's a 2022 HRV that is supposedly going to be a complete redesign inside and out. So I am curious about that because this tech is a little bit dated. That's another thing for constructive criticism on this one. The five inch LCD screen, that's pretty much unheard of these days. Nobody's gonna want that quite honestly. I guess it saves it some money when it comes to the price, but I don't know. And the other thing is LED headlights should really be coming standard. I, I know Mazda does that. A lot of manufacturers are starting to do that these days, just giving LED headlights standard across the board because that helps to get an IIHS top safety pick, which this one does not get 
because of the halogen headlights, quite honestly. So, so my question to you guys is, do you get this one now with its incredible reliability, the 0% financing, all that fun stuff, or do you wait for the 2022 redesign? Put it in the comments section below. I'm curious to hear from you guys. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all, and I love doing it. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.